quite yeah. possible that children yeah. will die. Mm -hmm. We try to do our best. That's a very, very difficult situation. This is my house. Uh, my my wife. Uh, this is my children, yeah. And the other two was outside. Hello, what's his name? Ah, uh, she's a uh, junior, Eduardo Junior. Oh, yeah, yeah, because very he, nice. Because he's the only boy. All around here, the one thing that strikes me, there is very romantic music yeah. playing. Are you both romantic? <laughs> the two of you? Are you romantic people? Yeah. Yeah. I think because you're... uh. We have no, uh, almost six children if they are one, if they are one, thank you. <laughs> so, Sita, what happened when your last baby was born? There was a really bad storm that night, and then we were here in the house, and then I was holding the baby and rocking her, and the storm was raging, and the other children were squashed here beside us so the rain wouldn't get to them you see it gets flooded here we've never had the money to fix the roof it leaks all the time i was worried that if they got wet they'd get sick like my other children who died see, my eldest was four years old when he got sick he got sick here, here in this house. I, I didn't know what to do. You see, living here in these filthy conditions, the smoke and everything, he got really bad diarrhea. Well, it killed him. That time, they were demolishing the houses here. It must have been... 1982, yes, 82, when the demolitions happened. I had a row with the demolition man. I pleaded. Please, wait until I've buried my child before you demolish my house. Can you imagine? You have a dead boy in your house and they want to demolish it. This is a bit dead for my patient because there are worms get outside of her mouth. She had worms yeah. that, that, that came out of her mouth. Mm -hmm. So they bring them to the hospital because uh, on that time I'm in, in my work. Yeah. So when I when I when I go to the hospital, I I saw that my baby was dead already. We did calculations to show how many children in the Philippines die because of the way the debt crisis has been managed. And we calculated how much the health budget had been cut. And on the basis of that, came up with a figure that one Filipino child dies every hour because of the increase in debt service payments. That, to most people, seems to be a matter for the financial pages for the banks and the governments. But in fact, debt has been, in the past decade, the largest new contributing factor to hunger and to misery. The Philippines spends almost half its national budget paying just the interest on debt owed to foreign banks. These are homeless children on the streets of Manila 
but they could be anywhere in the indebted world. Here the problem of homelessness has become so serious that this police unit does nothing but round up children and try to find institutions that will take them. But they are few, and most of the children come back to the streets. Wow. <laughs> Lieutenant Siochi and his men run their unit partly out of their own pockets. All of them have to moonlight as taxi drivers and ice cream vendors. But these jobs are increasingly rare. The National Economic Development Authority estimated that as a result of IMF policies, half a million workers will lose their jobs in the Philippines this year. That means more children on the streets. Where do these children come from, the children that we've seen on the streets? Some of them come from the provinces and uh, very low income families here in Manila. So they come to Manila with their families? Oh, yes, oh. yes. And they found that uh, Manila is not a heaven as they uh, think, yeah. not now. Uh, before uh, they can uh, get easy jobs here, but now no more. The children that are sleeping alone, have they lost contact with their families? Most of them. They are, uh, the, their uh, parents uh, have abandoned them already because of these uh, hardships. They cannot uh, feed them anymore. Are they very vulnerable to drugs? Some of them. I noticed some of them look like they had been using drugs. Yes, yes, yeah. that's true. And prostitution? They are, uh, they are uh, as we call them, uh, walking doll. Walking doll? Yeah, because uh, they are uh, already prostitutes. Some of them are uh, sick and uh, hungry. Uh, but uh, once uh, we brought them to this uh, non-governmental non institution like the center, no? we brought them there. Uh, those social workers take care of them and uh, we find it heartening. The government is uh, bankrupt. Uh, we the government is even uh, paying uh, for international debts obtained by uh, the last administration of Marcos. So you're saying it's, it's, it's that, that's the pressure on the society that the government has to pay so much. If yeah. resources are going one way and it hasn't any money left to, to do something about the homelessness. Yes. We are supposed to pay uh, from the International Monetary Fund. Too many did. This 15-day-old baby was born on the streets. The parents are teenagers and were themselves street children and products of the debt era. The mother was born in the year the World Bank declared the Philippines a special case for development and lent the dictator Marcos more than $4 billion. During their lifetime, the number of people in poverty has risen by almost a quarter of the population.